シのソフトは難しいよテクノファンタジー対等 Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Episode Terrigan. We got the first episode of our brand new series, X Marks the Spot. We're going to be talking all about the Taito X2 platform and all the amazing games that are available to play. This is going to be a hardware overview and we're going to have you a little taste of what's to come. But do me a huge favor before we start, go down below and hit like and subscribe. That notification bell definitely helps us out. But let's see what we're going to be taking a look at in this series. Enjoy! And now that you've seen that fun little bit of entertainment, let's talk about the Taito Type X2 platform in and of itself, because it is a quite interesting platform, even if it isn't my favorite thing in the world, because it is just a PC in a box, and I like the older stuff a little better, but I do love this one here. And you'll see right on the top, it's marked what it has. It has a Pentium 4, 3.4 gigahertz processor with 512 megabytes of RAM and a GPU. Get some basic model specs, everything like that. Nothing too exciting because the X2 on the outside doesn't really look like a ton until you get to the back. But I will say these fans on the unit, if you want to buy one, sound like jet engines. You might want to replace them out. But you'll see it's looking basically like a standard computer motherboard. You've got those PS2 mouse and keyboard inputs. you got a DB25, some VGA ports, USB, and a whole accoutrement of audio ports. This is like looking at an early to mid-2000s computer. That's because this basically is what it is. It's a little later than that, but if you've seen one motherboard, you've seen them all. And this definitely looks exactly like you would expect, down to the graphics card with the DVI connector. This is old enough we weren't doing VGA yet, but we do have an S-Video connector as well. And unlike JAMA, even though this is marked as JAMA, this is a JVS board. It uses a completely different standard. You'll see those dip switches there that we'll talk about in a minute. But compared to a traditional JAMA board that uses the JAMA Edge for controls, JVS does something completely different, and we will go over that in just a moment. Take a look around the side, it has another massive fan. This thing is huge, but don't forget it was supposed to be in an arcade cabinet, so it is allowed as hell. Definitely replace these if you buy one. Well, let's start taking a look and seeing what is inside of this big metal coffin because it is a lot more interesting inside than out. You'll see here this is an aftermarket plate for the hard drive underneath it. But the Taito X2 shipped with hard drives. Now this is a multi-unit. You could have an SSD in there. This is how it came to me with this drive. It's a 500 gigabyte. But everything is running off this hard drive, including the installation of Windows that it works with. This really is just a PC in a box. Of course, it's an arcade board and it has some specialized functions, but honestly, it's a computer and we'll get to that a little bit more. But Taito put so many screws on this case, it takes a lot of work just to get to the point where you are ready to open it. But the nice thing about it being a PC in a box is that it doesn't require much repair whatsoever. They are very durable outside of maybe the GPU having an issue now and then. But now that we have the top off, we can talk about what is inside of it. And like I said, it's just a computer. You have a large heatsink here for that Pentium 4, and you've got your standard Molex style computer cables. And this isn't the most exciting thing to look at, but what it plays is a ton of fun. You have RAM sticks, a GPU, and you have that JVS card in there as well. And I'm using a Wi-Fi antenna for my pointer today because it's a PC. Why not use a PC part? But you'll see here there are two RAM sticks in here, and you can change RAM out, although the RAM in here runs for every single game. And it is silk screened as a Taito motherboard, but I'm sure this is just a bone stock motherboard that Taito used and had their silk screen put on top because this looks like pretty much any other, you know, mid range to budget motherboard on the market. And you'll see back here we have an NVIDIA GPU. Again, it's just a computer. It's not that exciting inside. It's fun to talk about from a historical arcade perspective as to when arcades started pivoting over to being PCs in a box. And you'll see this JVS card right here. 
is quite small. It doesn't have many connections whatsoever. It just pops into the motherboard and that's how you control things. You'll see that there is a battery backed component right there. I have never seen one go and leak, but be careful. You just have to check it out. And there's some PCI slots. The nice thing is around the back, there is dip switches and this can run in either high definition or can do 480p and that's an awesome thing. If you put dip switch two down, it's going to run as 480p. So if you have a VGA monitor, it's gonna be great. What you'll see here on an arcade stick, it doesn't have anything you can plug into and you can't just plug into JAMA. Getting JVS stuff controlling if you wanna collect this is one of the harder things to do. And I did a video previously about the Tucson Logic JVS IO board. It's absolutely spectacular. I'll leave a link below. I make nothing off it. It's just the product that I like. And putting a quarter next to it on its side, you'll see just how tiny this thing truly is. But if you've just been collecting JAMA boards and dealing with controls in that respect, jumping over to JVS is a completely different thing. Now, it is not harder. It just requires different equipment. That's why having JVS stuff at home is slightly harder in some ways and slightly easier in other ways. But you'll see here on the back of this board, it's all demarcated as to what those inputs will work as. And this is great because if you buy an original JVS IO board for the X2, it's much more expensive than what we're getting here with the Tucson Logic and this works as good if not better than those Taito IO boards. You'll see it connects via USB into the IO board and then you can break those inputs out however you want. I use a DB15 connector for my home built stick here but all you need to do is wire it up based upon those silk screens on the bottom and connect it to your type x2 unit i use a ribbon cable you can do honestly whatever you want it just takes a little bit of building and i do recommend building things on the x2 not buying them you're going to save a ton of money you just need to figure out how to do these and i'll leave some links in the description below to videos i've talked about on how to do custom wiring for jvs and arcade boards that way you can use it for something like the naomi as well but let's get away from talking about naomi and get talking about the x2 again you'll see here the basic setup is just whatever input device you want whatever cord you want between it to that Tucson Logic JVS IO board and then the USB back in. It is a mess of wires if this is not in an arcade cabinet. This is not the type of thing that you're going to leave sitting out on your table when you feel like playing it. I think that's one of the downsides to the X2 in and of itself. It's an amazing platform and I love it, but it is so industrial and requires so many cables. This is the type of thing that you're going to take out of the closet, use it, enjoy it, and put it back. And like I said, it is from the era of having things be computers and boxes that were arcade boards. And while that is fun and Taito did a great job with the X series, you have the X, X2, X3, and X4 at this point in time. It's one of those things that doesn't catch my interest as much from a hardware perspective, although it is fun to show it off. I enjoy the late 90s complex JAMA and otherwise board, something like the NWKTR here from Konami. It's big, it's wild, it's pure custom silicon made in-house with some PowerPC chips on it. It's just a little bit more fun to play around with in that respect, but hey, maybe you're way more into the computer stuff and that is totally fine. We each get to decide what we want to play around with. But yeah, that is the Taito Type X2 intro. We're going to have 10 episodes on 10 amazing games. So if you have any questions on the hardware and need help with it, leave me a comment down below. We've got a Patreon as well down there if you feel like supporting us. Short of that, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.